Okay, so quick, quick journey. Uh, we started yesterday by saying that the whole world has been confusing leadership with followership. It's time to change that. We said leadership is not a position of authority. We said leaders are not born, but they are made. And we also said it's not about case studies, competency models, and what have you. The whole concept of leadership development and leadership education needs to change. What is leadership? You look at these people that you've experienced over the last two days, and what do they have in common? They all have one thing in common, and that is they are crazy about building a better future, and they have endless energy to continue doing it and never give up. That's, in essence, what hopefully should be the takeaway of the last two days. Uh, we said that there are three sources of this leadership energy, clarity of values, which gives you fearless purpose, but also the ability to have strength, clarity, and calmness of mind at the same time. That's what it takes, leadership energy at the personal level. Now, uh, how do you go about becoming a leader like that? I get asked that question all the time. And I have a very simple formula. Well, I shouldn't call it a formula. My colleagues will kill me. I always say it's not about formulas, so sorry, guys. Uh, it's not a formula. Uh, but whatever it is, we call it the personal leadership energy life cycle. And the good news is anybody can do this. Everybody can do this. The first step is to give your life a story. At any point in time, take a pause, look back at your own life, and say, what were the defining moments? What happened? Who am I? Give your life a story. I'll explain it in a minute. Second, give your story a meaning. And third, give your meaning a life. That's all it is about awakening the leader within you. What do I mean by this pretty uh, diagram? Give your life a story. Look back at any point, you can say, pause. I want to look back at my own life. What were the defining moments in life? What were those uh, uh, moments and what kind of values did I inculcate? What are my values? And I start to recognize that energy based on those values. This calls for deep, deep reflection. Good news, you can do this tomorrow morning. What do you mean by give your story a meaning? Now that you have values, you have your defining moments, you have your life story, now give your story a meaning, meaning find purpose. Everybody here and everybody in the world is capable of finding purpose, and that's what you should take away from these two days. And then what do you mean by give your story meaning a life? It means get started. Leadership can be explained in one word, and that one word is imagineering. You first imagine a better future, and then you reverse engineer it. In other words, take the first step, and then the rest will happen automatically. Most great leaders that we talk to we ask them, where do you get the resources to do all the things that you do? And they say, we never, ever start a project with full resources in place. We do it with 5% and take the first two steps, and then the 95% falls in place. I think that's another takeaway from all the stories that you've heard yesterday and today. So that's the story of leadership energy at the personal level. Question is, what about... Now that you're a CEO or a division head or a department head in the company that you work for, and you have to harmonize the energy of a lot of people that work for you and work with you, because you cannot build a better future alone. What are you going to do there? And that's what I'll spend the next few minutes on and then wrap up. Uh, if uh, a journey into the future with Professor Kaku was, uh, was not enough already, let me try to summarize a little bit more about what the, what the present uh, and the near future is looking like. We call it the open source 21st century. Here's what it is. We live in the world of breakneck speed that's going to get even faster. We live in the, in the age of total transparency. Everything is open. Your whole life is on Facebook and Instagram. There's no such thing as a closed source software. Everything is open. Everything is transparent. Ordinary people are more empowered than ever before Every one of us, however ordinary we might be, we have a recording device in our pocket, and that's the power. On the other, uh, there is a clear shift towards free agency. Full employment is passé. Now I want to be a free agent. Uh, leaders, on the other hand, are totally exposed and naked. Uh, you've just watched the elections. Every single word, every single action is out there. That's what we call the open source 21st century. That's the world that we live in. So the question is, in this open source 21st century, 
how can leaders harness the energy of the thousands of employees, agents, and other stakeholders in this environment? It's hard enough to find your own values and purpose and your own energy. How are you going to harness the energy of all these people? Now they don't even have a reporting relationship to you. So you don't even have the little bit of power you had before on them. You still don't have, you don't have that at all. What are you going to do? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. So here's another. I talked to you about three or four myths about leadership uh, yesterday, right? Question is, in this open source century, will a democratic, all-inclusive style of leadership produce breakthrough results? Or will some other kind of leadership style produce breakthrough results? Uh, 95% of leadership literature is all about democratic, all-inclusive, I love you all kind of leadership. Is this going to create breakthrough results in this day and age of breakneck speed and nakedness? That was the question that we asked you yesterday on those red forms, on those pink forms. What do these kinds of leaders have in common? And very quickly, we gave you 11 attributes to choose from and asked you to choose your top three. And about 400 of you filled out the forms. Um, now, the red ones are democratic, all-inclusive, I love you all behaviors. And the blue ones are my way or the highway, in other words, autocratic behaviors. Right? Two kinds of leadership behaviors. We asked you, again, going back, who, what do these people have in common? Choose top three out of these. You did not know that these were behaviors were color-coded color yesterday, but they are half and half uh, exactly, right? Which ones do you think you guys, as a group, uh, chose as the top three or five? The red ones or the blue ones? Exactly. That's the score. That's the scoring from you guys yesterday. Yeah? So what does it say about democratic, all-inclusive leadership? What does it say about 95% of the leadership literature? The next question we asked you is, in order to drive unprecedented success, business leaders today most need to, again, all the blue ones, according to your own data, are on the top. What kind of leadership style? Here's the problem. We have loved and admired autocratic leaders all along, but we don't come out of the closet and say so. Uh, I was talking to Professor Kaku earlier. He says the reason why the opinion polls are all wrong in America is when you call somebody and say, who are you voting for? Do you think a Trump voter is going to tell you that I'm voting for Trump? No, because he doesn't want to get beaten up. They don't want to. So this is it. The same thing with leadership. We say democratic leadership, but no, we've admired autocratic leaders all along. And you're saying that even today, uh, for today's leaders, they need this style. We next ask the question, uh, in order to drive unprecedented success, and we're asking you the same question three ways, as you remember. Uh, in today's environment, significant amount of top-down or autocratic leadership is required. 65% of you agreed or strongly agreed. Actually, the number is larger than 65%. If you take away the 15% that neither agree nor disagree, only 16% of the people disagree. So what does that tell you about it? Think about it in that way. Uh, now, we have also done this survey in 27 countries, and slowly the data is all coming in. This is all going to be published in the book uh, next year called the Naked... Uh, I'll tell you the title later. Um, um, this is, so far, the global data that we are getting. It's identical to your data. Yeah? This, so here's, here it is. This is you guys, and this is the global data. And from 27 countries, everybody is admitting that autocratic leadership is required in today's open source 21st century. Bad news, isn't it? Bad news. We are, in an, we are entering an era of really bad bosses who are going to be autocratic. Oh my god, where is Rajiv going with this? <laughs> Eclipse global data on this question is even stronger than yours. In this case, 72% agree or strongly agree. The news is getting worse and worse. Again, if you compare the two, 75% here, it should be 72, and 65 uh, over there. But still, the trend is in the same place. So, 21st century leadership dilemma. Breakneck speed, total transparency, ordinary people more empowered, leaders totally exposed and naked. The question is, if autocratic leadership is required in today's day and age, but you are totally naked, 
and the people that work with you and for you are completely empowered, how can you be autocratic in the first place? Because they can destroy you in seconds. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the leadership dilemma of the 21st century. If you are too slow, you will be left behind. Singularity or otherwise, you're going to be left behind. The need of the hour is autocratic leadership, but we know from the Arab Spring and other recent geopolitical events that using force and power is not even an option anymore. So what do we do? How do we resolve this dilemma? And the answer is the famous yin and yang. And what do I mean by that? You have to be autocratic about your values and your purpose. Absolutely no negotiation there. Your values and your purpose, totally autocratic, but at the same time, you have to be totally compassionate and humble with people and live the right values all the time. The ability to say, these are my values of integrity and honesty and this, that, and the other, and doing something exactly opposite, those days are over. Regardless of the results of the US election, uh, the fact of the matter is what the new president does in the open source era will determine his legacy or otherwise. So the way to resolve this dilemma is yes, you need to be autocratic because otherwise you won't produce results. Be autocratic about values. Be autocratic about purpose. Live those values 24-7, 365. But at the same time, be compassionate and humble with people. Be respectful with people. Lee Kuan Yew said it best. If there was a good reason why it is no, it must remain a no. But the man must be told politely, you lose nothing whatsoever by being polite. That's called uh, balancing the dilemma. So that's the, uh, a little glimpse into the data that, and, and, and the research we are conducting on leadership in the open source era. Um, and uh, uh, the reason why I didn't tell you the title earlier is the title of the book is The Naked Autocrat. It will be coming out in October next year. Uh, another interesting piece that I will highlight very quickly is another myth about leadership. What is the biggest source of employee motivation? And the biggest polling company in the world, which is Gallup, and many other uh, philosophers and management psych scholars will tell you that the biggest, uh, the, 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 the relationship with your immediate boss or your immediate manager is the biggest driver of employee engagement, right? That's what we've been told for the last 20 to 30 years. So right or wrong? Again, we asked you this question. How do you think you all answered this question? Yes, yeah, so we asked you this question. Between your immediate boss and you, please indicate by way of percentage on whom your primary motivation to excel at work most depends on. 83% of you said rated 50% or more on self. So people leave managers, not companies, is what Gallup would have us believe. Really, Gallup? We are in a new world. We are in a new place. Different kind of leadership, different definition of motivation. Everything around us is changing. Management and leadership practices need to change as well. So let me conclude, ladies and gentlemen, leading in the open source era, leadership is not a position, best practice, or competency model. Leadership is the art or the burning desire to create a better future. For that, you're going to need a tremendous amount of energy. Long-lasting energy comes from values and purpose and from a strong, calm, and clear mind. Autocratic leadership is needed in the era of breakneck speed, but ordinary people are very empowered and leaders totally naked. Therefore, be autocratic with values and purpose. Be compassionate and humble uh, with people. The future, ladies and gentlemen, belongs to the naked autocrats of the 21st century. Thank you very much for attending LISA 2016, and see you in 2017.